What is going on Raider Nation? It's your boy Sanji back at it with another video. Today I want to talk about Jarrett Stidham and really just talk about the quarterback. I talk about some of the things I saw from him plus some realistic expectations. You know, we made a couple of videos this week talking about the quarterback situation. Obviously, it's a major story, right? So rightfully so, we're going to talk about it, right? The Raiders haven't had a new quarterback in nine years, but now we're obviously going to have a new quarterback. Um, but I want to talk about Stidham and kind of what I expect out of him coming up in this game against the Chiefs. Because the truth is, is whatever happens in this game is really going to dictate how the Raiders move forward. You know, there's a chance that Jared Stidham has 400 yards, four touchdowns, no interceptions against a bottom seven Kansas City Chiefs defense. But that's not realistic, right? What's more realistic is he's going to fall, fall off a little bit, right? What's more realistic is Stidham may not have a lot of success. And there's a chance that we look at this guy and say, this guy's not the future. And from that point forward, we got to figure out what we're going to do with the quarterback situation. Let's talk about it. You know, there were a handful of plays that Stidham made this past week that you said, damn, that's impressive. You got the 60-yard pass to Devontae Adams. You got a couple of plays in which he took off running, right? He ended up with 34 yards on the ground, I think on seven carries. Um, of those seven carries, a couple went for first downs, right? So he was uh, moving the chains. But in my opinion, the one play that really, really impressed me was this play right here. So on this play, the Raiders are going to run this levels concept and Jarrett Stadium is going to end up hitting the tight end Foster Moreau. I'm going to let you guys watch the play and then I really want to break down something unique that Jarrett Stadium does that I don't think a lot of people realize it. I want you guys to watch this from the end zone angle and I want you guys to watch the body angle of Stidham. As he takes the football, look at him look outwards and then look at him come back to the inside. That part right there is very important, and here's why. Backing this up to the all-22 angle, if you guys watch Stidham as he looks out now, and you watch what this linebacker's going to do, he's going to go out. And Stidham looks back to the inside, and he's going to hit Foster Moreau to the inside. So what Jared Stidham just did with his eyes is he just looked to the left here, forced the linebacker, number 51 on your screen right here, to over-pursue that based off of where Stidham was looking. Then Stidham comes right underneath that and hits Foster Moreau. This stuff right here is advanced. This is not something that every single quarterback does in the NFL. To me, that's very impressive. Now, obviously, that play right there was very impressive, in my opinion. You know, as someone who started watching tape of quarterbacks, trying to learn quarterbacks, right, taking uh, courses and watching videos, for example, the quarterback school puts out a bunch of courses, you know, watching those type of things and kind of learning what goes into playing quarterback. What I watched from Jordan Stidham was very impressive. You know, all the little things that he was doing on tape were impressive. Now, just to kind of get a little bit deeper into it, I need to see him continue to develop. You know, I, we all see it, right? Jared Stidham's great job getting out of the pocket. Uh, he showed a couple of times he can reset his feet and actually get the ball out. But what I didn't see from Stidham is I didn't see him climb the pocket. I didn't see him move in the pocket, right? Navigate the pocket, right? And that's different than extending a play and running outside the pocket, right? Two completely different things. Uh, when I say I need to see him navigate the pocket, I need to see Colton Miller get pushed back by Nick Boza. And instead of Stidham run right into him and throw the ball, I need him to readjust himself, take two steps to the right and then throw the ball, right? I need to look, I need to see him navigate the pocket and that is one of the things i'm going to be looking for this week against the chiefs you know i don't care if he goes for 360 yards and throws three touchdowns that doesn't matter to me i want to see the little things right the, the the things on tape that show me this guy's a good quarterback because getting out of the pocket and making those throws resetting your feet being able to pick up first downs with your legs those things show me you're you're a quarterback that could have success but you gotta also have success within the pocket you can't take hits and he took a bunch of hits this past week right i counted at least five times in which in which he took hits um i think there was another play in which he took a hit he threw it deep to darren waller on that play and it was a beautiful throw waller almost caught the pass it hit waller right in the hands um there was another play that could have been intercepted as well um you know and and he got hit on at the same time so again i need to see him navigate the pocket right and be able to do things within the pocket and feel comfortable um obviously as he kind of settles in as teams start getting taped they're gonna start adjusting and looking at what he does and doesn't do well um right now 
what what this team's gonna test him is they're gonna test him within the pocket. Uh, they're gonna contain him. They're gonna collapse the pocket down, and they're gonna want to see if he can navigate the pocket, right? Because he didn't do that last week well at all. So the Chiefs are gonna do that. They're gonna force him to throw the ball out of the pocket. Now, obviously, trying to do something doesn't mean it's gonna happen, right? There's gonna be breakdowns. A DN may crash too hard on the inside, and Siddle may roll out that way, right? So we'll still see him do a lot of different things, uh, but I want to see that consistency, right? And one of the one of the things I kind of talked about on Twitter was um, the worst part of this being the final game of the season is if Jared Stidham does throw for 300 yards, if he does throw for three touchdowns and no interceptions, well, we're not going to get to see him for seven months. We will not get to see Jared Stidham for seven freaking months. And that too, we don't even know, like, are they going to pick up a free agent quarterback? If he has a great game, are they going to draft the quarterback if he has a great game? And then how open is the actual competition, right? What if the the Raiders go out and get a quarterback, right? A quarterback that may not be having a lot of success. Like, is it a true competition or are they going to just let George Stidham start next season, right? So there's a lot of expectations, in my opinion, for Stidham. And there's a lot of things I want to see from him. Now, obviously, another interesting point uh, will be if Stidham does somehow have a great game and it's very clear that this guy's the guy for the Raiders, at least for next season, and then we can kind of see how he proves himself, um, it's going to be interesting to see how we build this team, right? We, if we lose this week, are going to have a top six to seven pick. And if we win, we'll still have a top 11 to 12 pick, right? Regardless, we're going to have a top 10 to 11 pick. What do the Raiders do? Do they get an offensive lineman? Do they get a defensive lineman? How do the Raiders build, right? We may even have the opportunity to take one of the best wide receivers coming out this year there's three receivers that are likely top 20 picks right there's three guys that have first round grades all three of them are really good football players in the nfl so do the raiders take one of those guys and i know that might not help the defense that much uh, there's also a couple of linebackers so i'm excited to see how the raiders actually build this roster because if stidham's the guy there's so many options you don't have to trade for Aaron Rodgers or go out of your way and spend $40 million for Tom Brady and make sure he goes away from other teams. You don't have to go and spend a top 10 pick on a quarterback, right? So it's going to be very interesting. I'm very fired up to be able to see this final game. Um, it's against a great offensive team, but not necessarily a great defensive team. So I would hopefully expect the Raiders to score a lot of points, um, but we'll end up seeing what happens. We'll see if Josh McDaniels calls another good offensive game plan. Obviously, with the final two games, we are also evaluating Josh McDaniels. It's not just Jared Stidham, right? We want to see if Josh McDaniels can continue to have success. You know, with Derek Carr, he had a lot of failures, a lot of blown leads. And in my opinion, the Derek Carr and Jared Stidham, the blown leads are different, right? Derek Carr, when he was up by 10 points or more, um, only scored 12 points in the four games he was up, right, by uh, that amount of points. Stidham scored 17, right, so it's much different. 12 points in four total combined games in the second half for 17 in the second half, much different, right? Um, so we'll continue to evaluate the quarterback, the coach, and we'll see what ends up happening. I'm fired up, man. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think about Stidham and kind of what your expectations are. Where do you guys think he's struggling right now? And where do you guys think he can have success if he has success? Let me know what you guys think. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.